So it's important to have these two examples in the same place in your notes so you can compare these two situations. Um, normally, we, cho we, make, we choose the number one carbon to be in the position that gives us the lowest possible set of numbers. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes it doesn't matter where you put the number one carbon, you always get the same set of numbers, and that's the only situation where you have to use alphabetization right. to choose the numbering. However, you always use alphabetization just to determine what order you're going to list the prefixes in. Okay. In both of these cases, these were listed in alphabetical order. So yeah, that, that is a subtle nuance. This is the one we just did? Yeah. Let's try giving a name here. Now the first thing we're going to have to decide here is who the parent chain is. Should we choose the straight portion to be the parent, or should we choose the ring to be the parent? That's something that oftentimes gives me trouble. But I think you can see, if you choose the benzene to be the parent, it's going to be very difficult to name this substituent. That's this would be a very complicated substituent if we choose the benzene as the parent. Mm -hmm. I think things will be much simpler if we choose the straight portion as the parent. So let's try choosing the straight por portion as the parent here, and let's name the benzene as a substituent. Two phenyl propanol. Let's write that out. That sounds like that's good. I keep on forgetting that one carbon. Yeah, well, you got yourself. Good. So, what name did you end up with? Two phenyl propanol. Okay, that's right. So, we decided to call the straight portion the parent. Um, but we want to choose the longest possible parent that we can. So, let's not treat this like a substituent. Let's put it on the parent chain. So, that would give us prop. There's no double bonds, so it's an. There's an alcohol, that's O-L. Now, one thing you left out was the locator for the alcohol. Mm. Two. Great. Because it would be possible that the alcohol could have been on the number one. That's correct. So, of course, on the test, if, on multiple choice test, you'll see that that will be located. So that would be two propanol. Uh, and then we named the benzene as a substituent. And it's also on the number two carbon. So except for this one number, your name was correct. Two phenol, two propanol. Like I said, I have a hard time knowing when to treat the, the ring as the parent and when to treat the straight portion as the parent. But one good approach is do the one that's easier. Mm -hmm. If we treated the ring as the parent here, we'd have a very complicated substituent. So let's just treat this as the parent, which makes our life easier. And again, on the multiple choice test, you'll just be able to see which one he's treating as the parent. What does this condensed notation stand for? A what benzene would, ring. That's right. Good. This is really a benzene ring. Because a benzene ring really does have six carbons, and as a substituent, it would only have five hydrogens. That's really a benzene ring. So we're going to have to go back and review some of the nomenclature from, uh, that we've gone over earlier here, because this is a functional group that we've seen earlier. Well, let's take, take a shot at this. Let's see if you can come up with a guess for the name. We can name this using the principles that we've talked about, but some of them were. Well, I, I want to say it's uh, aniline, but there's, um, ah. it's not going to work because there's only one hydrogen. 
Let's see. That's right. Now, we can't call it aniline because the nitrogen here is part of another functional group. What we really have to do is, to, do you remember, what do we call this type of functional group here? An amide. Say again? An amide. That's right. We're going to call that an amide. That's right. And we're going to treat the straight portion as the parent again. Let's treat the straight portion as the parent. So we can't call this aniline because that would be, just like you said, when you just have a simple NH2 connected to the benzene. We have to go back and see if we can remember our amide nomenclature. Butanide? Is that what it is? Bute sounds good because there are four carbons on the parent chain. There's no double bonds, so it's butan. Do you remember what the suffix is for amides? No, I don't. This is one of the cases where a lot of the time in, uh, in, uh, in chemistry, the simplest cases are the hardest. Uh, the suffix for amides is amide. So even though the chemist chose the, the very logical suffix here, it is to, does turn out to be difficult for people to remember that. But the suffix for amides is just amides. This is butanamide. Now, if you remember when we talked about carboxylic acid derivative uh, nomenclature, I don't know if we talked about it, but I think you watched the video on that. There's a way to name when there's R groups on the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, what, how do we call, what, 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 what do we do when there's this R group on the nitrogen here? I, I can't recall. I, I don't okay. see it, but I, I... Now we're going to name this as a substituent. What do we call a benzene group as a substituent? A phenyl. And we need a locator to say where the phenyl group is. I don't remember. For example, if the phenyl group was here, it would be 4-phenyl. Or if it was here, it would be 3-phenyl or 2-phenyl. So what do we call it when the phenyl group is attached to the amide nitrogen? Well, you might remember from the other videos, that's N. We use the N locator to say when something is connected to the amide nitrogen. So this would be N-phenyl butanamide. N-phenyl butanamide. So it's, simply, it's definitely a lot simpler here to treat the straight portion as the parent. Mm -hmm. So this allows us to review a little bit amide nomenclature. Do we have up here? This is another type of carboxylic acid derivative. An acyl halide. That's right. It's an acyl halide. So we're going to use this as the basis of our name here. Now I don't know if do you remember what the suffix is for acyl halides. Again, it might be a while since we've looked at that. I don't, but on multiple choice. Then you can pick it out. That's right. So the suffix here is oil halide. Oil, yes. And in this case, we can be more specific and call it oil chloride. Oil chloride. Okay. So that's going to be the basis of our name. And it turns out that when you have a benzene acyl halide, that's called benzoyl halides. That's actually something we haven't talked about. I don't know if you can really figure that out from scratch. We just need to memorize that when there's a benzene acyl halide, that's called a benzoyl chloride. And we need to say that there's oh, a substituent. Even if it's connected at a, another uh, carbon further down? Ah, no, you're right. So this would be a whole different way okay. of naming. Maybe I'll briefly show you this in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but when um, the directly connected carbon is the acyl halide, this is the name. Okay. And then we simply need to say it show that there's a substituent on the benzene. Well, what's the name of this substituent? A nitro. So this would be nitrobenzoyl. And then we need a locator to say where the nitro group is on the benzene. So what would be a good locator here? Um, three nitro? Right. Clearly, this is getting the number one because it's the one that's connected to the carbonyl. So that's the name, 3 nitro benzoyl chloride. Right. Well, this was actually, um, we hadn't really talked about how to name benzene acyl halides before. So these are benzoyl chlorides. But um, this one would be different. I suppose this one would be
I suppose this one we would name like this. Okay. Now we would simply call this the parent, um, and we would say there's a benzene substituent. Mm -hmm. So notice that here we weren't really thinking of the benzene as a substituent. We were thinking as kind of part of the main chain. Uh, but here we would name it as a, as a substituent. So and there's two carbons here, so it would be 2-phenyl-ethanoyl chloride, mm -hmm. or maybe it would be 2-phenyl-acetyl chloride, because we know that acid is the common name for two carbons. So we just learned a little new nomenclature here, how to name acyl halides when the carbonyl is directly connected to the benzene. So based on the problems that your instructor was going over in the lecture, it looks like they might be combining the previous nomenclature on carboxylic acid derivatives with the benzene nomenclature. Well, again, you can get more practice with that in the, the homework problems, so you can see what type of homework problems you were assigned.